Hey everybody, I'm doing a video today, it's a biology topic and it's man's impact on the environment or human impact on the environment if I don't want to be sexist. We're going to be looking at acid rain, eutrophication, global warming and CFCs and the ozone layer and deforestation actually and I'm going to see how this video goes. I don't have a huge amount of time so I'm hoping that it's going to go okay. Um, but yeah, let's dive straight into it. So, when we burn fuels there may be impurities in those fuels such as nitrogen oxides, sulphur dioxide and what happens is they react with water in the air to form acid rain. All you need to know is that acid rain causes damage to trees and it may damage limestone buildings. Make sure you specify limestone, otherwise they may not give you the mark. It, they also make lakes and rivers too acidic, causing the death of aquatic animals. So many, many issues associated with acid rain, but that is that topic done. Next up, let's look at eutrophication. If farmers use too many... Um, fertilizers on their soil, what can happen when it rains is that these fertilizers wash into nearby streams and rivers, and we call this leaching. What that leads to is a massive growth of the aquatic plants because they need those in order to help them grow all those nutrients. The problem is those plants can't quite cope because they end up competing with each, with each other for light. That leads to the death of the plants. Now, the death of the plants means that the microorganisms can go crazy, they grow super quickly feeding on those decaying bodies. Um, because they are living organisms, they respire, and respiration uses up all that oxygen, meaning there's no oxygen left over for the fish, so all the fish die. So very quickly, with eutrophication, you see what was once a really healthy stream and river becoming something which is incredibly unhealthy and actually has nothing living in it, which is really, really sad. Let's touch on CFCs. Remember these are just produced by our aerosols and our deodorants and our hairsprays and the problem we're having with those is that they're causing holes in the ozone layer. Now the ozone layer is this, is this layer that effectively protects us from the sun's rays and so if there's now a hole in that ozone layer it could cause, to, cause skin cancer because the sun's too strong on people's skin and also you're causing general heating up of the earth's atmosphere which is actually global warming. Let's touch a bit more on global warming. Now, Global warming, as I said, is an increase in the regular temperature of the planet's atmosphere and it's caused by a number of gases and these are called greenhouse gases. Such greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide, the CFCs I just mentioned, and methane. Now carbon dioxide is released by burning fuels, which is another reason why we don't want to be burning as many fossil fuels. Methane, however, is a slightly different gas, CH4, you'll have met it in crude oil, and that gets released from many things including the bacteria that work in rice paddy fields and also intensive farming of cattle. Because what happens is those cattle burp and they fart, that's gross, sorry, and what they do is they release huge amounts of methane and that's actually juice for microorganisms in their stomach, breaking down the food that they've eaten. So actually intensive farming of cattle has most definitely led to the release of many more greenhouse gases leading to global warming. So what is the impact of global warming? Well the problem with global warming is it melts the polar ice caps, so that's all the locked up ice at the North and the South Pole, and that will obviously lead to a huge increase in the amount of water that is becoming part of our seas and oceans. As the water levels rise you end up with flooding of the low lying land areas, and that will obviously lead to things like the destruction of the habitat and the death of potentially many many species. When you're talking about these answers, you just need to talk about how the effect came about, so whether it was burning fuels or due to intensive farming of cattle, and then you need to talk about the effect that will actually have on the environment, whether it's the destruction of trees or the destruction of habitats, and you'll have full marks in no time at all. Let's quickly touch on deforestation. That's a bit of a geography topic. What that means is that the trees get chopped down. Why do they get chopped down? To provide land for growing food crops to provide wood for construction, to increase the economy of an area, all sorts of reasons. But the problem is those tree roots hold on to topsoil and if that topsoil is no longer being held down by roots it means that when it rains all the nutrients in the soil can be washed into rivers and guess what happens then where you have eutrophication. So many, many issues relating to deforestation. The other issue is that deforestation also leads to global warming because there are no longer any trees absorbing loads of carbon dioxide in their photosynthesis. So firstly, less carbon dioxide gets removed from the air, and secondly, when the trees get chopped down, they actually release that carbon dioxide that was locked up inside them as carbon back into the atmosphere. Again, doubling the impact and leading to increased global warming, rising sea levels, polar ice caps melting, and destruction of habitats.
I'm going to attach some questions. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm so sorry it's quite rushed. Um, I will try and find more time. I don't know where from, but we will see. Please like this video and um, subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye. So here's the first past paper question I'm going to go through. Water in lakes can become polluted if too much phosphate is leached from the soil. The polluted water becomes very cloudy because of the growth of lots of microscopic plants called algae. It is possible to find how polluted water is by using a black and white disc called a sechi disc. The following technique is used. The disc is lowered into the water using a rope. The disc is lowered until the water, into the water until it can no longer be seen. The depth where the disc is no longer seen is measured. The diagrams show a sechi disc in the way in which it's used. Here are some results from various lakes. They concluded that Lake C was the most polluted with phosphate. Suggest two reasons why this conclusion may not be correct or right. Yeah, fine, the depth at which we can see the sechi disc is um, the least, telling us it's the most polluted, but there's no way we know that it's definitely phosphate. So first of all, right, that it might be another pollutant such as nitrates. And for the second point, use anything else sensible. So you could say there could be issues with reliability as they only did it once, or that they may have used a different size disc, or they may have used different light conditions. I mean, goodness me, if they chose near night time, there's no way they would have seen the disc. So anything sensible there. The graph shows changes in the level of phosphate and sechi depth measurements for one of the lakes over a 25 year period. Using both graphs, graphs describe the relationship between phosphate levels and sechi depth. Right, from both graphs we can see as the level of phosphate increases, the sechi depth decreases, and you can talk about the fact that the sechi depth levels from 1990 at about 5 metres. The number of fish in the lake decreases over the 25 year period. Explain how the changes in phosphate levels might cause the decrease in the number of fish. This question screams eutrophication. So for the first mark, write that increases in phosphate levels may lead to algal growth. And then what happens is that they compete and so they, sorry, my bad, the algal grow. And what they do is they block the light for the plants which live beneath them. And then because they've blocked the light, it means that there's plant death. The plant death is obviously food for microbes, so write that for a mark. But the microbes are living organisms, so they respire. And then the fact that they respire means that there's less oxygen available for other aquatic animals. So first mark, algal growth. Second mark, that they block light. Third mark, that that leads to plant death. Fourth mark, bacteria buildup. Fifth mark, less oxygen. Sixth mark, due to respiration. These questions are fairly bitty, so I've just found this random part of another question that's related. So state two ways in which deforestation can lead to poor quality soil. Well, the first mark is due to leaching because remember that's the loss of minerals and for the second mark just say something really obvious like there's actually going to be less soil or that the soil gets washed away. Question 6. When organic material in sewage manure, silage, effluents and waste milk enters the lake or river it causes pollution. The organic material is broken down microorganisms. This process removes oxygen from the water. The amount of oxygen removed from the water is called the biological oxygen demand, BOD. Why is it called that? I don't know. Right. Let's look. Treated domestic sewage, okay, we've got quite small amounts of BOT, BOD, and then it ranges all the way up to waste milk, which is producing a massive amount of BOD, i.e. lots of oxygen being removed. Explain which pollutant is likely to have the most severe effect on the organisms in a river. So explain obviously means you need to say why, and let's identify which pollutant it is, and it's the one which has the largest BOD, which is waste milk for the first mark, and you can say here, why? Because it produces more bacteria or the bacteria use up more oxygen as a result of having more milk to feed on. A quantity of pollutant is released into a river. The effect on the organisms will depend on the BOD value and other factors. Suggest one of these other factors. Anything sensible here, such as the temperature or the light levels or the speed of river flow or the nitrate content of the pollutant. You could write any of those things. Waste milk is one of the pollutants. Name one of the biological molecules found in milk that the microorganisms could feed on. Well, milk contains protein, that means it therefore contains amino acids. You could have written lipids or fats or carbohydrate or the sugar found in milk, which is lactose. So yeah, anything sensible. Suggest a reason for the difference between the BOD of raw domestic sewage and the BOD of treated domestic sewage. This is such a gross question. Right, raw BOD, sorry, raw domestic sewage has a higher BOD. And what that means is that there'll be more microorganisms present because um, that's actually what that value is telling us because it's telling us that there's less oxygen. Um, because there's ex less oxygen, it's telling us that those microorganisms are respiring more um, as a result of having more nutrients from the sewage. I said that horribly. Just say that raw has a higher BOD and that there's more bacteria there. Deforestation has an effect on the environment. 
What is meant by the term of deforestation? Well, that is the removal of trees or cutting down of forest. Explain the effects that deforestation has on the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Right, that's going to lead to more CO2, um, and it's going to... The reason being is that the trees are no longer taking the CO2 in their photosynthesis, so you need to say that there is less photosynthesis. And remember, oxygen is produced as a byproduct of photosynthesis, so automatically that means there's going to be less oxygen. The release of pollutant gases into the atmosphere also has effects on the environment. Complete the table by giving the names of the missing gases and the effects of the gases on the environment. Write cattle farming, remember they fart and burp out methane, so write methane in the gas column, and this will lead to greenhouse um, Sorry, that will lead to the greenhouse effect or global warming. Right, next one, water vapour is produced by combustion and that again will lead to the greenhouse effect because water vapour is a component of global warming. Oh, excuse my English, it's so bad, but I really can't be bothered to refilm this. Next up, burning fossil fuels. The gas produced here is going to be a pollutant gas and it could either be sulphur dioxide or nitrogen oxides. And remember, they dissolve in water to form acid rain, so that's going to be the effect on the environment here, which they've actually told us, so why am I making that sound like it's an answer? Incomplete combustion, the key word here is incomplete, that produces carbon monoxide, and we can see that the clue is that it affects the transport of oxygen in the blood. Finally, CFCs um, are found in refrigerators and air conditioning units and aerosols, and what that does is it depletes or damages the ozone layer. Last question I'm taking is question seven. Actually, no, I might find another one. Sorry, my bad. The passage describes water pollution caused by untreated human sewage and by fertiliser. Complete the passage by writing a suitable word or words in each of the spaces. If sewage gets into fresh water, it will increase the number of pathogenic, um, say, microorganisms or bacteria here in the water. The sewage contains waste organic material in the form of, this is so gross, faeces or urine from humans. Microorganisms break down this material using a process called aerobic, that's a nice clue, respiration. This process reduces the level of oxygen in the water, making it less likely for larger organisms to survive. Fertilisers can get into the wa water by a process called leaching, that obviously means the fact that they get washed out of soil. The minerals present in the fertiliser, such as, right here, either nitrate, phosphates, potassium or ammonium, cause the rapid growth of, right here, algae or plants in the water. Thank you.